After Aston Villa at the weekend, only a couple days later, we've got what is now a must-win game in the Champions League against Villarreal. There really is no resting for Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer right now. After Aston Villa at the weekend, only a couple days later, we've got what is now a must-win game game in the Champions League against Villarreal. It might not be must winning the fact that we've got five games left and we should get enough in those five games to still qualify for the knockout rounds. No question. Not with the group that we've got and with the quality of the players that we have. But after three losses in four games, Solskjaer cannot afford to let this momentum continue because we've got two games now until a two-week international break. United need to get back to winning ways, convincingly get that style of play. That's what people want to see. Who will we see against Villarreal? This is my predicted starting 11 for that game against Villarreal on Wednesday. And there will be quite a few changes in this team. Most of them forced. We've got Maguire. He went off with an injury against Aston Villa. And so did Luke Shaw. Now, at this particular moment in time, we don't know whether either of them will be fit. But in my opinion, I'd be very surprised to see Ole Gunnar Solskjaer risk either of them. I think it'll be De Gea in goal. I think he'll keep his spot. Henderson might have been fit to play in the League Cup against West Ham, but I think Solskjaer is going to keep De Gea in here in his back five in the Champions League. And I'm going Tellez, Varane, Lindelof and Delot as my back five. So it's, as I said, quite a few changes in there. Tellez, he's a player who really just has not done it at all since he joined Manchester United. I don't know why he's been so poor by, by comparison of what my expectations of, of him. Champions League proven, really established about 27, I think, when we signed him. He's been naff. But he'll start this game, and I think Delot will start right back. wan Saka obviously banned because of his red card against Young Boys. Now, Maguire, maybe he'll be fit. Maybe he'll be fit to play, and maybe he'll get started in this game. But if you're talking about not taking risks, it looked like a bit of a calf injury. That's, that's at least what Maguire was pointing towards against Villa. You just don't really take risks with muscular injuries. So I'll be surprised to see Maguire coming in here. Even if he's like 95% fit, I just don't think he'll be risked. And I think it'll be Varane alongside Lindelof. I've always maintained this as well. Lindelof is actually a decent defender. He should be a backup to Maguire, and that's what he is right now. It's just that when you played him alongside Maguire, that's where the problems came out. So for me, that would be my predicted back five. De Gea with Tellez and Delot as the fullbacks and Varane and Lindelof. Let's move on to midfield. And as always, I want to say a thank you to OneFootball for sponsoring this video here on United People's TV. This time, the Villarreal Champions League Predicted 11. If you haven't already gone over there, download the OneFootball app. There is a link in the description. It's free to download. You get all the Champions League latest news, lineups, stats, facts, everything you need ahead of the game against Villarreal on Wednesday night. As I said, all you got to do is click the link in the description, download it there for free. It will help United People's TV. It will help you because it's a decent app as well. And remember, as soon as the game finishes, you can head back over there, go on the One Football app and get all the stats from the game, all the latest reaction from the game, from Solskjaer, from all the players. I would encourage you, genuinely, it's actually a cracking app and it's free to download if you haven't already got it. But moving on from the defense, let's as I said, take a quick look at the midfield. And this, of course, is where questions come in. I always said, again, I said this year, a bit like every other season, I suppose, under Solskjaer, the midfield was going to be a sideshow, was going to be a bit of a circus. Every single week, we're asking the same goddamn questions. And the answers will stay pretty much the same. Scott will start this game. Fred will start this game. And I'll be very surprised if they don't both start this game. I want to see some changes there. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer loves the 4-2-3-1. And given that it's reached that point now where he is under pressure, his job isn't a risk as far as I'm concerned, in my own opinion, but he's under pressure. And when Solskjaer is under pressure, he reverts to certain things. And Scott McTominay and Fred as a midfield duo are part of that. A reason that he does that because he feels it gives more defensive solidarity to the team. Some more shape because he doesn't trust the defence enough. And I, I kind of touched on this in my Gary Neville um, reaction video looking at his comments. And Manchester United's defensive unit as a unit just isn't good enough defensively. That's why Ole Gunnar Solskjaer feels this necessity to play Fred and McTominay. I wish it wasn't the case. I think we, I think we should be seeing Matic playing there alongside Pogba. Or Fred maybe alongside Van der Beek. Or McTominay and Pogba. There are 
alternatives that can be tried. And it's not as if we're all saying that one of them's going to be incredible, but it's going to be a fucking damn sight better than just trying Fred and McTominay every week and just repeating the same thing and expecting it to somehow come out differently. It won't. Not unless you play it. When you, when you get Fred and McTominay in, in the right games against the right opposition, they're good. You play them against a team that's going to come at United, that's going to play with real tempo and pace and, and leave space in behind because they're attacking aggressively, like Leeds, probably like City or Liverpool, then they'll get they'll get time and space on the ball and they probably will play quite well. Get them against the likes of Aston Villa or West Ham when they're going to sit deep and disciplined. They're going to hamper our ability to spray the ball forward and do it properly. Simple as that. That won't ever, ever change. And it's going to become, it already has become an issue at United. That's why I always said that this uh, this season was going to be a bit of a sideshow in terms of Manchester United and our midfield issues. Paul Pogba, would he stay? Would he, would he sign a new contract? McTominay, will, will, he, will he play as a defensive midfielder? What about Fred? Is Matic young enough to... And Donny van der Beek, will he even get any minutes? Donny van der Beek still not getting time. I would start him here instead of McTominay. But Solskjaer sees it differently for one reason or another. And that stubbornness could end up backfiring in Solskjaer's face if he's not careful because United are going down that path right now. What I expect is uh, United to sort of... We've had a bit of a mini bust. I expect us to have a bit of a mini boom. A few wins in a row, paper over the cracks, but things need to be addressed properly. I'm going to have to look into it in a bit more detail in specific videos, but I think it'll be Fred and McTominay in midfield. And up front, I would definitely make some changes. I would go with Paul Pobre on the left. I would go with Bruno in the middle, Sancho on the right, and I would go with Ronaldo up front. I think Greenwood had his first, um, probably, I would say, quite poor performance against uh, Aston Villa at the weekend. He was creating space, running in, making good runs poor decisions didn't look up as much didn't pass into his teammates in space enough and for me i think the champions league is probably where we're more likely to see Jaden sancho look like the Jaden sancho that we all thought we were going to get he has struggled in his time so far at manchester united i'm not worried about it i'm not calling huge pressure on him to perform it's just i think he'll probably he's more likely to do it in these games but remember because we lost that first game against young boys i think villarreal drew against atalanta that was a bit lucky for united in that sense because if villarreal came here and they won before going into this game they will be on three points chasing six and remember we lost to them in the europa league final and remember i think we've played them six times and drawn five times our record against Villarreal is not very good. Our record against Spanish teams is not very good. And we need a result here. I've gone Pogba on the left. I've gone Bruno in the middle. Right now, that's their best positions so far this season. And Ronaldo, of course, Ronaldo is going to start up front. No questions asked. Cavani is now fit and available. Well, they only came on in the 82nd minute against Aston Villa. Solskjaer has to make his substitutions earlier here if he's going to make them impact the match and change maybe things that are going on. That's down to Solskjaer and his own management and the coaches. McKenna feeling Carrick spot the problems in the game change the problems in the game now I would as I said I'd rather see Donny van der Beek start there in midfield alongside Fred or Matic probably Fred simply for the fact that if Fred I don't know if he didn't have the engine that he does he probably wouldn't really play for Manchester United at all but defensively he covers a lot of ground and that's what Solskjaer likes in him and out of possession interception wise he's actually a decent player it's just in possession he's poor that's why I want to start Van der Beek alongside him, but I'm not going for it. I'm going for McTominay as my predicted 11. Let's see if Solskjaer can surprise me, and I hope he does because something's got to change. Something's got to improve. Three losses in four games. You can't just keep keep putting the same 11 out and expecting different performances unless something is changing, unless the players are being coached differently behind the scenes. Bruno will want to come straight back after that penalty miss, so expect him to play well against Villarreal. I expect, as I said, United to win this game and bury that game against Villa. If we don't, then that's four losses in five games if we were to lose this game, hypothetically. So and because because of our record in the last few games going into this, it's it's a big it's a it's a massive game. It's not a big game, it's a massive game for Solskjaer in the context of everything. In the context of the season, it might not be that important, given that we've still got five games to go in the Champions League. But who would be in your starting eleven? Who would you want to drop from that team against Aston Villa? Who would you want to bring in? Does Sancho start? Does Fred and McTominay? Who starts in midfield? You let me know yours in the comments below. And as I said, please make sure you do download OneFootball, the app. The link is in the description. It will help United People's TV. It will help, you help yourself as well. It's a cracking app. But who is in your team to face Villarreal? You let me know in the comments.